Are you ready to challenge your visual memory? These puzzles will definitely make your brain sweat. Take a look at this picture and try to memorize each object. Okay, the time is up. Can you sort the extra object out? These scissors don't belong here. Let's make the task a little harder. Take your time to memorize these staplers. And now let's see if you can spot which object didn't appear in the initial picture. Option C is new. The next one. Try to memorize these donuts. Great. I'm sure you remember them all by heart, and you'll have no problem sorting the odd one out. Option A doesn't belong here. Here comes the next set. Try to memorize all the details. Okay, which ice cream didn't appear in the initial picture? B. You'll need to stretch your photographic memory to the limits if you want to solve the next task. Here are six different burgers. Pay attention to all the details. You're going to need them later. And now let's take a look at these nine pictures. Can you spot which of these burgers didn't appear in the initial picture? Ready to see the answer? B, D, and E. The next one. Try to memorize all six rings. Good. Can you sort the three extra rings out? Options A, C, and F don't belong here. Take a look at this picture and try to memorize each parrot. The time is up. Can you spot the parrots that were not present in the original picture? B, E, and F. And now let's go ahead and study the following images. Great job. I'm sure you remember every flower. Let's see if you can find them among these 20 flowers. 1, 7, 9, 15, 16, and 19. The next task is the same. Do your best to memorize all six mugs. Okay, can you spot them among this variety? Ready to see the correct answer? Here they are. How about a task change? Study these six objects very carefully. Ready? And now let's hide them and try to remember where this object was. Over here. Was it too easy? Let's complicate the puzzle a little. You have a few seconds to memorize these 10 objects. Great, can you recall where this image was? It was here. And what if we increase the number of objects to 12? Ready to try? Can you spot this object's location? There it is. Here's the next group of objects. Try to memorize them all. And now let's hide them and swap their places. Can you restore the original sequence in which the objects were placed? Ready to see the answer? There you go. Ready to try again? Here's a group of objects. You know what to do. Let's see if you can restore the original sequence this time. Here's the correct order. Can you handle eight objects? Let's check. Here's the initial sequence. Take your time to memorize it. All right, let's rearrange the images. Can you bring them back to order? This is what the original sequence looked like. Anna arrives at an empty parking lot. Can you guess the number of the place where her car is parked? To make the task easier, we should turn the picture upside down. And now it's obvious that the correct answer is 87.
Miranda is a very rich woman. She lives in a fancy circular mansion with diamond chandeliers in every room. She also has a diamond table, a movie theater room, a spa room, and a huge garage with five antique cars. But today Miranda is very upset. She has just found out that one of her cars is missing. She asks the butler, but he says he was making her bed. Miranda questions the maid and she says, I was dusting corners. And the chef says, I didn't touch your car. I was making breakfast. Who's lying? The maid. Miranda lives in a circular house, remember? So the maid couldn't be dusting corners. I can be cracked. I can be made. I can be told. I can be played. What am I? I'm a joke. Toby and Bobby decide to prank their English teacher. They succeed, but the teacher wants revenge. He detains them and takes the students to the basement. Teacher, you'll stay here until you solve my riddle. Make one word from the following letters. Toby and Bobby spend seven hours there. And finally, they solve the riddle. And the teacher lets them go. How did they do that? The answer is literally one word. Rose is riding a bike. Suddenly, someone throws a cup of strawberry milkshake in her face. She loses her balance and falls. Rose looks around, finds three suspects, and interrogates them. But each person swears to have nothing to do with the prank. Bianca says, I was just doing my daily workout. I'm on a sugar-free diet, so I would never have bought this disgusting milkshake. Nick says, I was reading a book and enjoying my own milkshake, but I like chocolate, not strawberry. And Lauren says, I was just walking my dog and I didn't look at the road. Who's lying? Lauren, take a look at her bright purple lipstick. There's a similar mark on the cup that was thrown at Rose. Zelda finds a recipe in her granny's old cookbook. But unfortunately, the last ingredient is encoded. Here's a hint to crack it. Although I may have eyes, I cannot see. I have a round face with lots of acne. What am I? Any idea what it might be? It's a potato. Four criminals are planning to rob a bank. They agree to only take the gold bars. They return home and decide to divide the bar among themselves. Can you find a way to separate this shape into four equal parts? Here's the easiest way. Liam gets a spooky invitation to a Halloween party. He comes along and sees something creepy right away. All the guests are vampires except one. Can you spot a human? Take a closer look at the lady in a witchy costume. She's the only one who has round pupils like a normal human being. Someone stole the most expensive painting from the local art gallery. The police arrive at the crime scene and pull some fingerprints. They identify three different people. Two of them are trusted employees of the gallery. But the third fingerprint belongs to an unknown person who might be the robber. The detective suspects four criminals specializing in art thefts. He finds their fingerprints in his database and compares them with the ones from the crime scene. The detective identifies the robber right away. What about you? Can you guess who stole the painting? These fingerprints belong to the gallery employees. So here's the robber. Cherry and Sam spend their honeymoon at a fancy resort. Can you spot any mistakes in this place? pool is frozen. Bob is having dinner and watching TV after work as usual. But can you spot anything odd in this picture?
The mirror reflects a different TV program. There are three different yachts to choose from. Which one should Jake pick? The second yacht has no lifeboats or jackets. It's dangerous to sail like that. As for the third boat, there's a tied up man on board. And this sailor is a ghost, so only the first yacht seems safe and reliable. Kendra, Stacy, and Monica are besties, but in fact one of them is a bad friend. Can you guess who? Monica. She left an ice cream stain on her friend's coat on purpose. Ryan wants to surprise his wife. He calls the local flower shop and orders a huge bouquet of daisies. An hour later, someone knocks on Ryan's door. He looks through the peephole first and says, Oh wow! A fake delivery guy has arrived! How did he know? The delivery guy didn't know that Ryan had ordered daisies, and he brought roses instead. The next puzzle will test your visual memory. We're going to show you a couple of images. Try to memorize them as best you can. All right, time is up. And now let's see if you can find the mug that you saw at the beginning. B. What about the ice cream? A. And finally, can you spot the original cat? Option D is correct. Here's the next set of images. You know what to do. Are you ready to spot the butterfly? Option C is correct. What about the gnome? D. Can you find the initial candle? B. And what about the comb? It's over here. And now try to memorize these images. Let's check if you can find the glove that you saw at the beginning. Option D is correct. What about the phone? It's over here. Can you find the original pencil? A. And what about the broccoli? It's over here. Can you spot the shoe? B. Nina's brother decides to prank her and changes a six-letter password on her laptop. He leaves a little clue in Nina's room so that she could crack the code. Can you help her? To solve this riddle, we should take a look at the calendar on the wall. The marked dates imply a number sequence, 6, 12, 15, 24, 5, and 18. But the password should contain six letters, not numbers. We need to find the corresponding letter in the alphabet. 6 for F, 12 for L, 15 for O, and so on. And the final password is flower. Alex is going to the Moroccan desert. Alex decides to go explore the local market. He wanders around and a stranger approaches him. Stranger. Hey, mister. Would you like to buy these ancient statues? I found them in a tomb. They're thousands of years old. Alex gets very interested. He loves history. He takes a closer look at the statues and gets mad. Alex, your statues are fake. How did he know?
The first statue is holding a phone. The second has the hieroglyph of a bicycle. The third statue also can't be that old. Back then no one knew what the earth looked like. And the fourth statue is wearing sneakers. Busted. Robert is a professional thief. He knows that Mrs. Gold is hiding a diamond necklace in her safe. But now he fails to crack the required eight number code. What about you? Let's take a closer look at the paintings. See these dominoes? It's a clue. They form the code 32156124. Stephen is building a new house for his family. He's visiting the construction site to check how the builders are doing. Stephen finds out that someone has broken an expensive antique mirror. Only three people had access to the house. Stephen questions all of them. The supervisor says, I was feeling sick yesterday, so I went home earlier to get some rest. The interior designer says, Yesterday the mirror was fine. I arrived here in the evening to take some pictures for my design project. See for yourself if you don't believe me. And the mover says, I wasn't here yesterday. I spent the entire day at the construction supermarket. So I don't know who did it. Who's lying? The designer. There's a selfie among the pictures that she took yesterday. Take a look at her glasses. They reflect the opposite wall in the broken mirror. Busted! Imagine you are being interviewed for a job opening at one of the world's largest companies. I'm talking about Google, Microsoft, or even Elon Musk's SpaceX. But to get your dream job, you have to pass a very tricky entry exam. I've gathered some of the questions that are actually used in these tests. So put on your thinking hat, and don't settle for less than 100%. Good luck. We'll start out easy. The first riddle you need to solve is the two-jug riddle. Here's the drill. Your mother asks you to measure four cups of orange juice using two jugs. The thing is, you have a 20-cup jug and a 36-cup jug. How can you do it? You need to start by pouring the orange juice into the smaller jug. Then, pour all the juice from that jug into the 36-cup jug. This way, the empty space from the big jug would give you 16 cups. After doing that, you can fill the 20-cup jug using more fresh juice and pour that liquid into the 36-cup jug. This way, you'll fill the entire 36-cup jug. And what is left in the smaller jug is the four cups of juice your mom asked for. Clever, huh? Moving on to the second round. Say your room has three switches, and one of these switches is for the fan in the room next door. You cannot see whether the fan is on or off unless you come out of your room, got that? Okay, so I need you to figure out what's the minimum amount of times you need to go inside the room next door to identify the correct switch that turns on the fan. This is a little bit tricky, but here's the solution. The minimum amount of times you can go inside the room next door and still figure out the answer is one. Imagine you turned on the first switch in your bedroom and left it on for a bit. As soon as you turn it off, you quickly turn on the second switch and run to the room next door. If the fan is rotating slowly and is about to stop, that means that the first switch is the one that controls the fan. If the fan is running, then the second switch is the correct one. And if the fan isn't moving at all, then it was the third switch all along. Did you manage to crack this one? Hey, nobody said this was going to be easy. It's a mock job interview for a top-notch company after all. The third round is even trickier than the one before. An interviewer might ask you to solve this riddle to understand your pattern finding capabilities. Let's say you were asked to watch a six lane car track for the day. Your job is to spot the four fastest cars out of 36. How many races would you conduct to find that out? Here's what you could do. Conduct six different car races, grouping six cars per race. After you determine the winner of each of these races, you conduct another race with the six finalists. The winner of this race will be determined as the fastest vehicle of all. 
then just place the second, third, and fourth cars according to how they performed in the last race. By the end of seven races, you'll have figured out the four fastest cars out of 36. Good for you if you figured this one out. For this next riddle, you need to think logically and mathematically. A queen needs to hire a worker for seven days to do a job for her. The queen pays in gold bars, but she must pay the worker every day at the end of his shift. If the queen is only able to make a maximum of two cuts in the gold bar, how can she pay the worker the correct amount of one-seventh of the gold bar at the end of each shift? Uh, let's see how this can work out. The queen makes two cuts in the bar, dividing it into three pieces. The first piece is one-seventh of the bar. The second piece is two-seventh of the bar. And the third one is four-seventh of the bar. After the first day of work, the queen gives the worker one-seventh of the bar as payment. On the next day, she gives him two-seventh of the bar and asks for the one-seventh piece in return. At the end of the third day, she gives the worker the smallest piece again. This way, he has a total of three-seventh of the gold bar on his hands. Then, after the fourth day, the queen takes away the first two pieces and gives the man four-seventh of the bar. At the end of day five, she gives the worker one-seventh of the bar again. And at the end of day six, she gives the worker two-seventh of the bar and gets the one-seventh piece back. On day seven, she pays him with the final one-seventh piece, and the deal is completed. Ready for the last round of the first level? If you've answered everything correctly so far, I dare to say you are a part of a very special group of people. Good luck with this next one. It will determine whether you'll move on to the second level. Two buses are driving toward each other at a speed of 40 miles per hour. They're separated by a distance of 40 miles. A bird is flying to and fro, landing on bus one, and then on bus two at a speed of 50 miles per hour. By the time the buses come across each other, how many miles will the little bird have flown? Math lovers, this one's for you. The first thing we need to find out is the time it would take for the buses to meet. To find that out, we should divide the distance between the buses by the combined speed of both vehicles. If they're both driving at 40 miles per hour, then their combined speed is 80 miles per hour. Since the distance between them is 40 miles, we divide 40 by 80. This will give us 0.5 hours or 30 minutes. To figure out the total distance traveled by the bird, we multiply the speed of the bird by the time it will take the buses to meet. And this would give us 50 times 0.5. So the correct answer is 25 miles. Phew, I'm tired just thinking of that little bird flying all those miles. Hey, if you've aced this test so far, congratulations. You've just unlocked level two. The riddles will get more and more difficult, so keep your mind sharp. A tortoise is currently at the bottom of a 210 feet hill and is trying to reach the top. Every hour, the tortoise climbs 15 feet and slips down one foot. How long will it take the tortoise to reach the top of the hill? Here's the thinking behind this riddle. Every hour, our tortoise buddy climbs a total of 14 feet, right? Since it climbs 15 and slides down one foot. According to this, it will take the tortoise 15 hours to get to the top of that cliff, since 15 multiplied by 14 equals 210. This wasn't too bad, huh? Questions such as these ones allow interviewers to test your problem-solving abilities regarding numbers. You know, if you want to work at a space company, you should probably be very, and I mean very, good with numbers. This next riddle is one of Elon Musk's personal favorites. It's short, yet complicated. If anyone here dreams of becoming an employee at SpaceX, you better get this one right. Imagine you're standing on the surface of Earth. You walk one mile south, one mile west, and one mile north. You end up exactly where you started. Where are you? If you answered the North Pole, then you got it right. But the riddle doesn't stop here. If you weren't at the North Pole, where else could you be given the exact same instructions? Yup, the South Pole. Here's how this works. 
This riddle presumes that the world is a perfect sphere. And if that were the case, the only place where you could walk one mile south, west, and north, and end up in the same place is at one of the poles. Got it? To get to level three, you have to answer this riddle correctly. There are two strings in a room. All you know is that each string takes exactly one hour to burn. Your task is to time exactly 45 minutes, using the strings as your only source to find out the time. How can you do it? Here's how it goes. You should light both ends of the first string and one end of the second string. In 30 minutes, the first string would have burnt completely because it's burning twice as fast with both ends on fire. Then, you should light the second end of the second string. The second string would still have 30 minutes left to burn, but by lighting its other end, the rope will burn twice as fast, AKA in 15 minutes. Voila! You've timed 45 minutes without the help of any clock whatsoever. Hey, smarty pants, you've just made it to level three. If I were the interviewer, I would probably give you the job already. But just for the sake of it, be sure to answer everything correctly, okay? These final questions are way more job specific. As all questions in this video, they were used in real job interviews. So we're basically training you to ace your interviews. For example, if you were applying for a position at JP Morgan, this is the type of question you would have to answer. How many streetlights are there in New York City? Can you figure out the number before the time runs out? As impossible as this might sound to guess the answer without a Google search, what JP Morgan wants to test is your estimating abilities. Here's the logic. New York City boroughs have an ordered urban grid, so your first task would be to estimate the number of horizontal and vertical blocks in each borough. Then, estimate the number of streetlights each block may have. Multiply that number by five since New York City is made out of five boroughs. And then you'll have your number. If it's somewhere close to 300,000, then you got it right. If you were applying for a position at a healthcare company, you'd be faced with this fruity riddle. An apple costs 40 cents, a banana costs 60 cents, and a grapefruit costs 80 cents. How much does a pear cost? Yikes. I had to read it a few times before getting any idea of what to do with it. The key to answering this riddle is to focus on the vowels. If you charge 20 cents per vowel, the two vowel word apple will cost 40 cents. By the same logic, the three vowel banana will cost 60 cents and the four vowel grapefruit will be 80 cents. In this scenario, a pair will cost 40 cents and that's your answer. You've made it to the end of this test. Check your armpits. If you're sweating, that probably means you've done a very good job. To finish off, here's an interesting question a tech company asks their interviewees. How would you describe the internet to someone who has just woken up from a 30-year coma? Different from all the other questions, this one has no right or wrong answer. You might try to compare it with something that existed 30 years ago, for example. Or you might just go into Spielberg mode and describe this near sci-fi world we are living in nowadays. Either way, I hope you've got the job. Get ready for a tough but very fun riddles competition. Yeah! Take whatever helps you activate your logical skills. A magnifying glass, a deerstalker hat, or a notebook. And let's get rolling! Let's warm up with some easy stuff. Can you find a vampire among these emojis? Here it is. Ugh, creepy. How about this crowd of people? Can you spot a vampire hiding among them? It is this girl. Look at how sharp her teeth are. And one more riddle for you. Which of these people is a vampire? See those fang marks on the neck of that guy? 
He was bitten and has already turned into a vampire himself. Stephen was found unconscious in his living room on a Sunday evening. Someone had hit him on the head. The man was rushed to a hospital while the police started questioning the suspects. There were three of them, Stephen's ex-wife, his neighbor, and his younger brother. Hmm. Stephen's ex-wife said she'd been walking in the park with her little niece all day. Stephen's neighbor said she'd wanted to go on a date with her boyfriend, but since it had been raining heavily, they decided to stay at home. Hey. And Stephen's younger brother said he'd been at work, finishing a large project. It was so important he had to work even on weekends. The police figured out who the attacker was quite fast. Can you do the same? It was Steven's ex-wife. It had been raining heavily all day long. Who would walk in the park with a little kid in such weather? A criminal has kidnapped your friend and tied him to a tree. A huge, vicious dog is guarding this tree. You need to save your friend at night. But when you come to that place, you only have one piece of meat with you. It's not big enough to distract the dog for the three minutes you need to cut the ropes and help your friend escape. How can you solve this problem? Cut the meat into small pieces and throw them all over the garden. And while the dog is distracted, set your friend free. One day, Amy went on a date with her boyfriend, Joe, to a nice restaurant. Yeah. Joe gave her flowers and candy. They had a great meal and enjoyed the date. But in the morning, Amy woke up with a severe allergic reaction. Oh. She went to the hospital, where she was told that she had been poisoned. But to figure out what antidote Amy needed, it was crucial to understand the source of the poison. The detective invited to investigate the case questioned everyone who could poison the girl, her boyfriend, the cook, and Amy's friend Cindy. Joe said that they'd eaten the same food in the restaurant. The cook said that he had brought Amy her pizza, and it had been freshly made. And Cindy said she thought Amy's boyfriend had poisoned her. She added that he had asked her what flowers Amy liked to gain Amy's trust. Have you realized who poisoned the girl? It was Cindy. Have you noticed the book on her table? It was about poisonous flowers. She advised Joe to give Amy flowers that would cause health problems. Ah. One company organized a betting game where one red and one blue marble were placed in a dark box. If a player picked the blue marble, the company had to pay them $5,000. But if the player guessed it wrong, they had to pay the company $100. The company cheated by always putting in the box two red marbles instead of one red and one blue, but no one could prove it. Mark was observing people lose one after another. Then he took part in the game and won. How did he do it? The man picked a marble and quickly put it in his mouth without showing the thing to anyone else. The remaining marble was red. According to the rules, it meant that Mark's marble was blue. The company had to pay him the money. Now, you need to pay attention to every little detail. Can you figure out whose dog it is? Look at that guy wearing a red jacket. See that leash he's holding? It matches the dog's collar, so most likely he's the owner. This parrot has managed to sneak away from its owner, and now the vet is looking for them. Can you say whose bird this is? The owner is that woman sitting on the couch. There's a cage behind her. Another waiting room at the vet. And whose sphinx cat is this cutie? See that guy waiting for the doctor to bring back his pet? He's surrounded by lots of furry animals and can't stop sneezing. He must be allergic to fur. That's why he got himself a sphinx kitty. And whose horse is this? See that girl standing in line? She's the only one wearing riding boots. She must be the owner. These kids seem to be terrified. 
No wonder. See that white rat darting around the classroom? Who does it belong to? It's that girl who's checking her backpack. You can see a cage and some rodent food inside. Ah, oh, look at this cutie. What do you think? Who does this mini pig belong to? This guy is the owner. His outfit matches the scarf the pig is wearing. How sweet is that? And whose hedgehog is this? This lady is the owner. She's wearing special gloves to handle the animal. Yes! And who does this absolutely adorable pug belong to? Its owner is this guy. If you look attentively, you'll notice a pug tattoo on his leg. Lily came home and saw her favorite vase shattered. Extremely upset, she exclaimed, What's happened to my vase? Her husband Sam explained that around lunchtime, he heard a loud crash from their bedroom. He rushed there and saw that Lily's expensive vase had been broken, and a robber was running away. Sam followed the man outside, but his glasses got foggy because of the cold weather. That's why he missed the man. Lily called the police, but after police officers heard the whole story, they refused to investigate this case. Why? Glasses fog up when you enter a warm place, not vice versa. Sam invented the story because he was afraid to admit he had been the one to break the vase. Oh. Emma's husband Liam knew his wife had been dreaming of going to an archaeological site. One day, she told him about the perfect opportunity. There was a remote site ready to be excavated, but there was no internet or network connection there. She would have to camp in a tent with almost no modern conveniences. But since she was really excited about this trip, Liam was ready to wait for her at home. Two days later, Liam received a message and a photo from Emma. The man got furious. He realized Emma had been lying about the whole thing. How did he understand it? Before leaving, Emma told her husband there was no internet connection or cell phone reception there. Then how did she manage to send him the photo? Several bank workers visited a canteen in their office building. Since it was the riddle day, Matthew, Isaac, and Wyatt were served tea, and Hunter, Christian, and Nathan drank coffee. What drink did Aaron get? Aaron drank tea simply because of his double-letter name. A man with a bandage around his head came to a police station. I was hitchhiking when a car stopped. The driver asked me to check if one of the tires was flat. I bent over to look, and he hit me on the head. When I regained consciousness, I found out he had taken all my money and smartphone. I only remember that the guy had a big car, large eyebrows, and a mustache. Soon the police had a suspect. They found him in a cafe, but this man said it couldn't be him. He changed the tires on his car two weeks ago. And since then, the car had been parked near the cafe, but the detective realized the man was lying right away. How? There's a no parking sign near the cafe. No car could be staying there for two weeks. Isabella is standing behind Mia, but at the same time, Mia is also standing behind Isabella. How is it possible? The girls are standing with their backs turned toward each other. Mrs. Red was a big boss in a large company. Recently, she hired a few new employees. One day, her assistant was filling out their documents and found something strange. What? She informed Mrs. Red that one of the new employees seemed to have fake documents. But the boss was in a hurry and told the assistant that she'd have a look at the papers the next day. Yeah. But the next day, Mrs. Red found out that her assistant was in a hospital, unconscious. Oh. Someone had attacked her on her way to work. Mrs. Red hurried to check the new employee's documents. Look at them and try to figure out which ID is fake.
This ID card claims that Edward is 34 years old, but the man using this document is way older. Oh. It was an extremely hot day. Police officer Black was driving along a countryside road. Suddenly, he noticed a hitchhiker on the side of the road and stopped to give him a ride. The man explained that he had been waiting for someone to pick him up for more than two hours and offered the officer some ice cream. Black refused and asked the guy about a gang of criminals who had just robbed a jewelry store. The hitchhiker exclaimed, I've just seen a red car speeding past me. Must have been the robbers, but they were driving in the opposite direction. We'll need to turn back. Black didn't believe him and took him to the police station. How did the police officer guess the hitchhiker was a criminal? If the hitchhiker had indeed been standing on the side of the road for two hours, the ice cream would have already melted. So, he lied to lead Black the wrong way. Oliver has in mind one of three numbers. One, two, or three. Charlotte is allowed to ask him just one question to figure out which number it is. Oliver can answer her question only with no, yes, and I can't say. Which question should Charlotte ask? She can say, I have the number one or two in mind. Is your number larger than my number? If Oliver answers yes, it means he's chosen three. If he answers, I can't say, the number he has in mind is two. And if he says no, his number is one. Several people were asked to step over a pencil lying on the floor, but none of them managed to do it. Why? The pencil was placed near the wall. Who doesn't like Rebus puzzles? They're fun, and I've got a few tricky ones for you. Enjoy! What does it mean? It's misunderstood. Try to crack this one. So we see pot and eight O's. Together, they make potatoes. And how about this one? That's high five. Small hint, the arrangement of these letters is important. This rebus means, hurry up! And one more puzzle for you. What could it mean? It's a friend in need. A hungry vampire is following you on a deserted street one dark night. Suddenly, you see a house with its door open and hide there. The vampire can't enter your shelter, but is patiently waiting outside. However, you still have some hope. There are three tunnels leading out of the house. But inside the first tunnel, there is molten lava. The walls of the second tunnel keep closing every ten seconds, crushing everything that gets inside. And the floorboards of the third tunnel collapse every five seconds, sending everything lying on them into an abyss. What should you do? Just wait till the morning. Vampires can't stand daylight and your pursuer will have to leave you alone. Yes!